Hi, my name is Alman Ainsworth. Today we're here with Bruce Kibo from The Big Group. The Big Group is of Australia's most premier um, events and catering business, known to throw the best parties to the rich and famous, partnering with Lexus, uh, running Spring Carnival, and also doing my bar mitzvah. <laughs> Bruce, when they announced the cancellation of the Grand Prix, which was the big news in Australia, the next big news was your announcement. Well, I think the Grand Prix might have been a bit bigger, Zelman, but um, yeah, we, we really felt that as soon as the, they pulled the pin on that, the Victorian government, um, on the advice of the health officers, uh, that the next stage really would be that the events industry really would be shut down. So we took that and we ran with it very quickly uh, and we immediately sort of enacted a shutdown to the entire business. Um, we have about 130 full-time, 600 casual, and then a whole um, part-time, sorry, then a more informal workforce that goes to about 1,400. So we straight away put everyone on a stand down, which was a very hard thing to do. And do you still think it's six months? Till you'll start taking events again? I think, you know, when I look at the way Australia's handled it, um, and everyone has their own you know, views on the government and the, of both federal and state, that said, uh, as a brand, Australia is looking incredible on the global stage. So I think they've handled it extremely well. I think the JobKeeper thing was a great initiative. Uh, so, no, I think we'll probably come back a little bit earlier than what we thought. Uh, that said, um, at that mid-March moment when we, we pulled the pin, I think we were all of the feeling that you know business would come back to the way it may have been. And I don't think that that will be the case. I think as we look at the emotional impact on our customers uh, and the way corporates will act and react to this, I don't think we'll go back to the way it was. So the art now is to find the new. So big events are no more? No, I think in real life events will always go ahead. I think that, you know, if you look at history, people will always want to celebrate and, you know, cherish moments in both a private sense, but also to activate brands and be part of major events. But I don't think in this 2020 year that the new norm will actually be looking for large scale eventing. The big group's a tenant and you and your family are also a landlord. Um, what's your views on landlord tenant relationship over the last few months and going into the recovery stage? I think it's very clear and obviously there's a lot of Bruges going around. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> from our point of view, we have multiple properties, both residential and commercial. Uh, but we had the ability to be able to stop, you know, mortgages where we needed to. So as soon as we had that ability to break, then we also have the ability to ease off the pressure for tenants as well. So I think that that's a very clear um, analogy. Uh, on the reverse with regards to the situations where we have some um, tenant landlord relationships inside the business, we had exactly the same discussions with our landlords and came to exactly the same conclusion. So it was clear, it was transparent and it was honest and um, you know, they're the people you want to do business with. I think the Spring Carnival will definitely look different. Um, I've actually got a presentation on that tomorrow, so it's on the top but of my head. But it's going ahead? Oh, it will definitely go ahead. Um, and if we even rewind ahead of that, AFL will lead the way um, with regards to what um, major eventing will look like for the 2020 year. And I think that, you know, some of these things and, and this pandemic has been no, no question a crisis and, and you know, massive um, loss of life globally. But if we park that and just, you know, put that piece to the side just for a second, there's another element to this that is very important. It's really about the human nature of Australians, you know, and football is, from a mental health perspective, a massive part of, of how we operate and, and how we, you know, get ourselves going. So that cultural piece is massive. So we really need to make sure that the major events come back in whatever form they do. And we may not all be in the stadium together, but now that the restaurants and the bars and the clubs are starting to come together, we believe that there is a, a space to um, try to support those vendors who have had a pretty tough time, but also to try to stretch and extend sports throughout. So I think there'll be a modicum of on-site and off-site entertaining for this year. I think corporate Australia and globally will take longer to get back because there'll be quite a lot of governance about social distancing and putting um, large organisations at risk of an outbreak. So I think they'll always be the most conservative. So it will take a bit longer for them to come back. So the art is to find ways of bringing people together, perhaps not in the traditional forms that they did prior. What major changes can we expect in the hospitality industry as a whole? moving forward. I think the hospitality industry hopefully uses this as a really great 
moment to change. Like if you look at the restaurants and, and you, 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 you know the margins that some of those retailers, you know, you well know we used to have um, cafes, which, you know, have a shocking margin, which we got out of. But, you know, a cup of coffee really probably shouldn't cost three fifty or four fifty. It's probably about seven twenty five. So if you factor in rents and, you know, the correct wages being paid, things like that need to change. So the consumer actually needs to change its approach and the vendor actually needs to bump up some of those prices. So I think the very good will survive and I think the sort of the average will definitely come out of it. I think you'll see more restaurants having a sort of event style model where, you know, that chair, that restaurant seat will have a value, you know, and it might be 125 bucks a head or it might be 85. So I think minimum spends and time bookings will definitely come in because they need to make sure the rotation, and I'm talking outside the social distancing rules, I think that's the only model that will probably keep them going. The B Group is known for running the best events at the best venues. What are going to happen to these venues moving forward like the Glass House and other venues that you're so famous for? I think that, you know, by the 2021 year those venues will come back and, you know, part of our, um, you know, the larger part of our business is sort of a unique portfolio of venues throughout the city. A and private celebrations will keep on going. But the thing about the events industry that's probably the most unique about it is we're very much a destination driven business. So where we plonk ourselves, be that CBD or South Melbourne, it brings so much traffic. So that that business flows out into so many other vendors. So we really need to get businesses like ours back up and running so that we've got that churn of um, business. The other part of the other major events part is, you know, AFL, Spring Racing Carnival and Tennis. The billions of dollars that that brings into the state of Victoria via those major events, hotels, retail, you know, hats, all those kind of things. So people sort of see sometimes as the events industry is a light industry, but the flow on effects and the amount of people employed and um, working and spending in that is major. So we need to really get our feet back on the ground. But at the moment, we are a little bit the antichrist of the way COVID is because, you know, with the Ruby Princess and the start, it was a hospitality sort of extraction that was seeing the pandemic moving faster. So that's why I think we'll be the last to come back. Um, but hopefully we will be the best to recover. And what would your advice be to small business owners in the hospitality or the catering industry of how to kind of make the most of this recovery stage in Melbourne? Well, I think the most exciting start piece about the recovery is we're all now in startup phase. So I've pretty much said to our team, forget the way we used to operate. Um, you know, don't look back, look forward. And I think when you put a business into startup mode, all of a sudden the energy is entirely different. So we're thinking much sharper and faster. You know, we're looking at every element of cost. We're looking at every element of what's good revenue and what's bad revenue. You know, you reconsider your client base and have a look at <coughs> where your good clients are and where you're not so good clients are. So I think that that's a really exciting piece because it's very rare in business history that you get the opportunity just to sort of close down. And for us, it's 30 years of history. And then look at what does the next 10 years of you know future look like. So that's the bit that I'm kind of finding really exciting at the moment. So we'll build a much faster, leaner, sharper business than perhaps where the growth had got us. The big group has pivoted their business in the last couple of months into virtual gatherings. Look, I, I firstly, I love a Zoom, um, Zellman, because, you know, not to have to get in the car and drive and park and pay $65 in the city for, you know, 10 minutes. Um, you know, Zoom's been a really great initiative, I think. And, you know, we had that tech for a very long time and we didn't use it. Added, you know, you'd go to Sydney for a one hour meeting and spend the whole day, you know, it's crazy. So I think the effective use of time is fantastic because it helps for everyone's work-life balance. That said, um, we then got on that next app, you know, House Party, did you see that? And so, you know, you'd have all your friends and there'd be six people on sort of chatting and I thought, oh, that's really fun too. But there was a gap for us. Um, and so the last 10 weeks, um, I've spent a lot of time trying to think about what the gap is. And it really, you know, if we look at a world where the stadiums are empty and we look at a world where people are still at, in their homes and we look at a world where travel and especially global travel won't happen for quite a while, there's still a human connection piece that needs to go back in there. And it's sort of not Zoom and it's not house party. Um, but brands still have to be activated. People still want to dress and people still want to connect. So um, we've been working on a platform that we've um, just called, we've titled Event. So basically what Event is, is a world between esports and e-gaming and hyper-realism. So in the hyper-realism world, um, we can create virtually any environment. So where we're sitting now, 
Um, as you know, we do a lot of work in the Middle East, so when we map a party there, we pretty much do a render of you know, every chandelier, every light, every copper pot, um, and that takes a lot of time. But it allows you to make sure that the event you create and these are like $25 million weddings, is exactly the same as the render that was prior. So often after the event, I look at the two and I can't quite tell the difference. So what we've developed is this piece where we can create hyper-realistic hyper environments uh, where you and I as EMEs, you know, which is the new version of you, so you get to go to your, you know, your e-wardrobe and choose out whatever you like, Zilman, you might be quite outrageous. You know. <laughs> <laughs> From a retail perspective, I think that there's a, a, a touch where bricks and mortar has been amazing, but not everyone can get out to go to the shops anymore. So if you can take your EMI and get dressed in your digital outfit, um, you can actually walk down the boulevard of Chadston and then look in the door at the E Tiffany store and buy a gift for a friend or then go to the E Gucci store and try on the new Gucci outfit and then have it shipped and shopped. So to do that from your bench um, makes a very big difference. So it just allows a new version, and that's why we've called it Event, um, that we can actually play in a digital world. It's not that it's entirely new, it's just that we've got a new set of circumstance going on now, and so there's a piece in the middle that we think we can add value to brands by creating a non-real life event. Whilst you run the biggest events in Australia, the big group and your family have very big personalities in this market as celebrities and so on. Um, we'd love to know your opinion on retail shops in Australia, particularly around high streets. Um, what can we do to improve it, particularly the smaller shops that you see on the sidewalk down here on Richmond? Well, my wife has a very strong opinion about shopping and if she had her way, she'd like all the shops closed. She doesn't like shopping at all. Well, your wife's not here now. <laughs> No, I think high street shopping will always be a way of life. And, and I think there's a beautiful joy and it's like a theatrics, you know, our business, you know, at the end of the day is about moments and memories and creating theater. If a retailer can't do that in their environment, they're in the wrong business. Uh, and so I think a high street shop, and I think to a certain degree, shopping centers will always remain. It's an experience, it's an outing. So that, that's the same as saying, will anyone ever not go back to the Melbourne Cup and watch a horse come down the straight, you know? That, that's, that's guttural emotive. But this experience has taught us that actually if I want food from the best restaurant in town or I need something shipped and delivered, I actually can pivot and start using it. And so many people who I don't think had used Zoom and people who hadn't used online shopping before now have. So I just think that pendulum shift, you know, it was always going to happen. I think this has just been exacerbated to it. So you've got to be really good to stay alive. The, the thing that also too, I think there's this globalisation piece that's sort of happened inside Covoid where Australian brands are going to be really coveted again. And I think this Made in Australia campaign, I think is a really great thing. I think disposable, especially in, in the fashion industry, this disposable fashion of very big firms, there's a sort of a, a reluctance to go that way. So hopefully people move towards quality and value, um, but also, you know, best in store. I mean, you, you know from a your business. Um, look, there's lots of takeouts from, from what's happened. I, I think on a personal level, I think this has been a really a, a beautiful time. So, you know, I, ha I say that in that, you know, I'm very fortunate, you know, <laughs> I have a happy life and a happy marriage and, and good kids and, you know, and, and I'm secure. So, uh, uh, so it's with no disrespect to the horror, but on a personal level, it's been wonderful, you know, to actually have a break. You know, I've spent 30 years, seven days a week, 365 days a year with some kind of problem. You know, there's always, 382 emails and there's always something, you know, Zelman needs something and someone else wants something else. And so it never stops. So, and even though we travel a lot, even when I'm traveling, it's always going and you worry. So as much as this is a big time to worry, I've found it a great time to reflect and to read and relax. And so I've really enjoyed the time. So on a personal level, it's been great. Um, from a business perspective, I think being able to restart your business is terribly exciting. Um, my dream would be to make sure that you know we're protecting all our people and they're all back in there. But some of them are going to pivot and do different things too, which is great for their careers as well. So I think there's just so much learning. Over this shutdown period, how have you kept your 
teams and your customers engaged and relevant and just in contact with you when you've been stuck in this beautiful penthouse? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things in there. We talked about Zoom before. I think communication is the most important thing. You know, in the beginning for us, it was communication with our team, our, our staff, and then it was communication with our clients and communication with our suppliers. What we've tried to do with you know, our core teams in the office is to make sure they're engaged. Um, my biggest fear was about mental health and, and just losing your creative stretch because at the moment it's a really great time to be thinking about ideation and, and what's next. I mean we've spent so much time sort of laughing and talking about you know we call it BC before corona and AC after corona and what does AC food look like you know I don't think we're going to have some big lavish buffet with you know breath all over it so I think there's great changes there so we're looking at you know what does packaging look like because maybe packaging becomes a really big thing with regards to food. So there's lots of wonderful things to think about. So that's been great for our chefs, it's been great for our designers. Funnily enough, we've been quite busy working on projects because there's been, we were in the middle of quite a few tenders for new venues and things around town. So we've been working on that and then the event piece has taken up a lot of time. So we've had a really good creative hub on that. And then I've got this other group at the moment called Make Corona Cool. So their whole world is just about, you know, I mean, we know we have to hand sanitizer and temperature check ourselves, but how do we make that a good experience for our customers so that you know every touch point throughout an AC world is actually got joy and fun.